I have to tell you something. The way I work, I always ship things ahead, but I keep crocheting until the day that I go to the site, I bring extra bags. So it's a ritual. I have to bring my bags with the rolling feed and the handles, and then I pack extra bags on top of them. And I'm like a stuffed animal filled with extra materials. And this is, has to go wherever I go to install. It, it's fun being back in Boston because it's where it all began. My mother taught me how to crochet when I was like seven. And then, of course, there was like a 30-year gap because you wouldn't have caught me dead crocheting. And then I began to do it at a time when I was being called a conceptual artist, which made sense. But that title was being linked to the aesthetics and the materials that I was using, electricity, shut light, shadow, wall drawing. And so and I began to crochet to say, so I'm crocheting now, is that conceptual art? And <laughs> often the answer, I think, was silently, no. Here at the ICA, there's a rather spectacular glass elevator. And adjacent to that is a rather spectacular atrium. And this is the space that I've chosen. This space is delicious and industrial and transparent and provides lots of challenges. Can we get up to the ceiling? Here we're staging horizontal members of the installation that will hold more cascading parts. Back there, they're um, installing a massive I-beam that we will hang this from. While they're working on the macro, I'm working on the micro. Working in this particular kind of space with this many variables, this is something I've never done before. So this is what it means to be working in a space. It's not uh, like one vision and you execute it down to the detail. It's responsive. It means working with the space, with the people in the space. And this is what it means to make art today. So I'm having a lot of fun. My first thought was to try to create something that could be animated by the elevator. A small piece of fiber will be attached to the top of the elevator. So the work moves just a little bit while the elevator is in use. And I like this kind of embodiment in this big glass steel structure. And uh, it's a kind of moving painterly gesture. This is something I've never done before. Uh, for years, I would make monotone of materials with different colors, like only shoelaces, only nautical toe line, only one thing. But now I'm working more and more with the materials as signifiers of who I like to shop with. This stuff is from Soul Choice. So this is shoelace material. And then this is a ribbon yarn that I love that I get from England. This is my favorite fun fur from <laughs> from Lion Brand, and this is from Army Outfitters, Paracord. I feel like a relationship with this couple of vendors that I like feel like are my friends now. This like small business operation is like a huge part of, of what I love about making this work. I never really set out to consider myself a fiber artist. I'm a sculptor who used things that my mother taught me how to do. But I knew that this elevation of women's work and fiber in particular was part of my feminist heritage. There was a time when you, if you said art and craft, people would get worried about which side of the aisle you were, you were working on. But I think a bunch of us now don't care and uh, understand the relationship between all of those things. We were always craftspeople, we were always artists and we're always designers simultaneously.